Hey, math people. So, average value and average rate of change. Two calculus topics. Two different formulas, two different ideas. Um, I guess I can write down the formulas, but let's look at the scenario first. Find the average velocity from 0 to 10. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to ask. If I have the acceleration function and I have some snapshot moments of the, the velocity and, and uh, displacement, I can then use my understanding of derivatives and integrals uh, to maybe use both of these. They're different things, but they can be used in this particular situation in similar ways, but there's a different practice behind it. So uh, average value looks a little like this. It's 1 over b minus a of the integral of f of x dx. This will get you the average value from a to b of your function. And then average rate of change, average rate of change, it gives you an average rate of your function. So keep in mind we may be playing with different derivatives here or different functions here. For average rate uh, of change that would be f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. This is just slope formula. Actually it's not even calculus but it's you know it's it's a uh, good element, good, good component to calculus when it's taught in this setting. So try these out. Go! Welcome back! Uh, as we know, so how are we going to work this? Uh, let's do average value first. As we, as we know, the velocity function is the integral of the acceleration function. Okay, and well, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Two-way street. Uh, so if I know my uh, acceleration function, what I can do is I can say, well, this is the integral of 3t squared dt. Uh, Alright, this is t cubed. Well, I have some sort of constant, right? Um, but we are provided that constant. It's equal to 2. So my c value would be 2 in this case. I know that my velocity function can be represented as t cubed plus 2. If I want to use average value, I want to find average velocity, I want to use average value with my velocity function. Uh, so what I'll be doing then to find the average value uh, how do I want to write this? Maybe I'd write v sub average. Uh, so I want to go from a to b. Maybe my a value is 0, my b value is 10. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to integrate this. Well, first off, I have this kind of leading coefficient here, 1 over b minus a. Here it'll be 1 over 10 minus 0, so that's just a tenth. Uh, and then we're going to integrate this from 0 to 10. Uh, and, you know, it's the function t cubed plus 2 dt. Uh, okay, I'm going to write this in a very deliberate, just on the board good, in an intentional way because I want to connect it to average rate of change. So I'm going to intentionally uh, take the antiderivative of this integral and I'm going to keep it over the same denominator to, to try to drive home a point, all right? Uh, so it'll seem a little weird why I'm doing that right now. I actually, here's, here's, here's the thing, I don't care about what the answer is. I have no idea what the answer is. What I care about is the conceptual piece. Can't, do we know the difference between these two? How do they connect? So I'm actually not going to uh, compute the answer at all. I don't care. Uh, I'm going to show that we're going to get an equality here. We're going to get two same things using two different approaches. Uh, so if I take the antiderivative here, this would be uh, 1 fourth, uh, well, it'd be t to the fourth. We're just doing anti-power rule. So I'm plugging in a 10 because that's my first value I'm plugging in. It goes f of b minus f of a, and then it'll be plus 2 times 10. That's plugging in 10, that's my f of b piece, into the antiderivative. How about I plug in my... i got to extend this a little bit. And everyone likes symmetry when possible down in the denominator. How about I subtract off what would happen if I plug in 0, even though I know it's 0. I want to show that these things are going to look the same. It'll be 1 fourth times 0 to the fourth plus 2 times 0. Okay. Whatever this comes out to is the answer. Doesn't matter to me. How do we do this with average rate of change? If I find the average rate of change of a velocity function, I'm finding my average acceleration because acceleration is the rate of velocity. So maybe in this box I can kind of highlight that notion. If we're going from displacement to velocity to acceleration, 
Uh, going down, we're taking the derivative. Going up, we're taking the integral. Let's write an integral symbol for that. What does that mean? When I'm playing around with the average rate of change, I need to use that on my displacement function because the rate of change for displacement is velocity. So what is this process going to look like? I know that my velocity function is t cubed plus 2. So I actually need my displacement function, which would be x of t. Now how can I go from my velocity function to my displacement function? Velocity to displacement, I'm integrating. So I'm going to integrate velocity, which is the integral of t cubed plus 2 dt. Wait a minute. This is going to be 1 fourth t to the fourth plus 2t. I do have a plus c as my constant, uh, but here we're, we're provided our kind of snapshot moment that'll help us out with that. Uh, it's technically a plus zero. So this is my x of t. Uh, okay, so average rate of change, I just plug in b, plug in a, take the difference, and put it over b minus a. Hopefully you're seeing something here. Uh, when I'm playing around with this uh, average velocity, I guess I can write it as v sub av average again, okay. Um, plugging in 10, because that's my b value, into my displacement function, I have 1 fourth times 10 to the fourth plus 2 times 10. And I'm intentionally not simplifying because hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing at this point. I plug in 0 and I'm kind of running off the board a bit. Uh, I end up getting 1 fourth 0 to the fourth plus 2 times 0. This is all going to be over b minus a. b is 10. a is 0. Hey, wait a minute. These things are the same. So in short, uh, these are different formulas. Don't get me wrong. Different purposes, different formulas. There are ways of connecting them to be the same thing, though, right? Because at the end of the day, you are kind of just finding an average with them both. Know the difference between the two. Continue to math on, and I'll do the same. I'll see you in the next video.